would you have like Welcome to this 35th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you from Montreal and standing in from ha for Hayden, who is shirking all responsibilities this week. I am Michelle. And I'm Anton. And wow, I'm glad that uh, someone's keeping track of how many we're doing and, and what we're doing, uh, because especially today, I'm, uh, I'm a little foggy. So Yeah, uh, it, it, tell me what's going on with your Anton today had a long night getting some stuff done um and uh i'm gonna as soon as the show is over i'm gonna go take a nap so we got five minutes and uh, i think that's all i'm gonna take um i know hayden's probably uh heading well i guess i think he's still like hours away but uh so maybe he's already heading to, to take a nap but i'm i'm soon after anyway uh, soon after so Considering you are so tired and it's dangerous to drive when you're tired, I will drive today if that's okay with you, Anton. I, I would greatly appreciate it. All right. Awesome. So let me share my screen. And I've got the dual screen. We oh, good? All right. We are good. Okay. Um, Anton, I know that you've been doing a fair amount of work on uh, multilingual translated applications, um, and there were some areas that you sort of struggled with a little bit, and you found an interesting solution that you thought we could share with the audience today, correct? I, I, that's correct. And uh, so it is about multilingual apps. And in particular, I'm a really big fan of using static LOVs in a multilingual app. It makes it really easy to translate your application. and um, you, you don't have to have extra columns and extra tables and all that kind of thing in, in your own, you know, in your own data model. You just use a static LOV. I, I know some people really, oh, wait a minute. We don't, we haven't even started the clock. Um, we haven't started the oh, timer. And, and if okay. we go over, I'm going to fall asleep. So um, we'll start the timer. <laughs> Let me, gosh, look, this, we really do miss Hayden when he's uh, not yeah. around. This is... The How little, do uh, I, I think it's the rewind. rewind. This yeah, guy here. There we go. Let's yeah. start. All right. The timer's on. All right. All right. I'm so, still yes. confident we can get this in. I sure. Um, so we we um so so I use static LOVs all the time. I know that uh well it, if you have to change one, it does require a code deployment. But you know what? If you have to translate it anyway, you're gonna have to do something in that. So I don't think it's that big a deal to use static LEDs. So I love them. Right here, I see you have an interactive report. Interactive reports are great for static LEDs. Um, I see your status column there, for example. That's, yep. it, how did you do that one? All right, so first of all, let me show you. Um, I'm now running, this is the sample database application uh, running in English. I've got the option here to run it in French. I did not just, I did not translate the entire app. I translated a few pages here, okay. but you can see that the status column, which is based on an LOV, static LOV, is translated within the report. So let's right. take a look at how that was done. So if you take a look at the status column here in the report, it is, um, oh, let me make that smaller. Plain text based on LOV, status so, LOV, and that just gets, you know, you translate that in the in the repository and it just works. It just works. And one of the things I love about interactive reports is you can use the, the hashtag um, uh, status symbol uh, in the advanced HTML formatting throughout the, the, um, the interactive report and it will come along with it. So if you wanted to have, you know, um, the the name, the person's name, and then the status after it or something like that, you can use that, that syntax throughout the uh, the HTML, um, like if you go down to, yeah, HTML yeah. expression there, right? You can use it in there and it will come right through. Um, so that's great. Um, classic reports are very, very similar. Um, you can use the same kind of static LOV with a classic report, but it does not allow you to use that same syntax to move uh, the the translation along. Um, but but you can make, make it work uh, nonetheless. The problem that I found is the new cards region which yeah. are great and I love. And I think they're the way that people are gonna start using a, a lot more. This doesn't have that methodology. You can't do what we just described. If we go look at your yeah. shipped here. So um, I'll just show you running it in French. So some bits got translated, but sure. the status is still, um, it's still, and it's actually not even showing it in English. It's just showing it, the actual code, right? Right, it's just showing the code. Because if we go over to our, uh, our little, 
uh, attributes here. So this is my cards region attributes, right. and here's the uh, status column. There's, there's nowhere to yeah. Exactly, you can't. And so, so this tip is more is partly a request to Oracle right there where you see the column. Let me use that based upon a static LOV. That's like right away. If I can do that. I get translations and I'm, I'm happy. But if I can't do that, I need another way. So what I did was I found a, uh, I wrote a view against the Apex metadata. So if we want to take a look at this view, this view, and we'll, we'll Is make that it big available. enough. Can you, can you see that big enough? Here? Uh, I, yeah, I, I think it's good. So it, it goes against the Apex application LOV entries uh, metadata, but it checks to see what language I'm using. And I got, it's the where clause that makes this all work beautifully. Um, it, and it, it's quick because I'm using a sys context in there um, and I'm using the select, uh, a, a scalar subquery. So when, when you do all the right things, this view becomes really quick. Now you can join this view, our AIT app LOV entries right into our query and yeah. we can do it that way. So if you go down to the next one here, you see you've done that here, joined yeah. it into the query. So, so let's take a look at the query, but you can see that in this report, I'm running it in French the statuses are in French. So let's take a look at that. So that's my second orders region here. Let's pop that out. Right. And so I commented out the original status column and here you go. Right, and so we've joined in. So if you look at line 18 there, we've joined in the new view that we created and we've said that we want to join it up between the return value and the list of values name that's associated with that view. Um, the, the performance is great. You don't have anything slow and you get to do your translations. Um, all of the translating still happens when you translate the Apex app. So you, you send it off to your translators, they do all the same this stuff, um, or in some we send it off to the CEO and he translates it into French. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. but it works. And so what we'll do is we'll make sure that we put that um, the, yep. the in some kind of show notes. I don't know, we'll get it somewhere, but that view um, is the, the, the secret sauce. And great solution works. And I'm hope I hope your customer's happy with that. But yes, Oracle Apex team, please add that to the uh, cards region as a declarative functionality. That would be great. Two, one, we made it. All we right. did it. I all think right. that counts. Um, all right, so I am not gonna stick around long, but I do have a wisdom um, of the week and, uh, and oh, I'll, I'll ask a few really questions. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. Yeah. I didn't say anything. Oh, oh. <laughs> how do I stop this guy? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, I like that. Good. I'm glad it, uh, I'm glad, that, you know, I've been doing so much with translations. It's really, I, I, I think Apex makes it easy almost everywhere. And then you come across the place that it's hard. And that's where I, you know, you, you end up doing so much to get something easy. Um, what I one thing I like about oh, this wait, wait, wait. Is, before oh, oh, we keep oh, talking, yeah, we're supposed to do all that stuff. You know, you're supposed to ring a bell and smash Describe. a banana and whatever it is. Um, Write a letter to your mom. Yes, that's it. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so good. We got a couple of good tips uh, coming out of this. So, um, so we'll do a wisdom of the week. We'll answer any questions that people might have. You'll have time to come up with those questions in any other chat about it. That makes sense. Makes sense. I know you had yeah. something, so write it down if you haven't. I'll, I, I'll try to remember. I'll try to remember. All right. So we're right. doing the wisdom of the week. W wisdom of the week. So I would never have thought that I would have to give this wisdom of the week, but it did come up the other day. So my wisdom of the week this week is things that are okay to put in your hydration pack, your camelback, water, sangria, things that are not okay, chowder. So the other day, my wife got a hydration pack for her birthday, and her as mom, you do. as you do, and her as mom was do. there, and her mom, her mom asked her, "So, what do you put in there? Water?" And uh, my wife said, "Yes," but my older daughter said, "Or sangria," and then my younger daughter said, "Or chowder." <laughs> so, Spoken like a true New Englander, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to need. You, you won't need a bite valve. You're going to need a chew valve on your hydration oh, pack. Okay, that's a bit nasty though. <laughs> Y'all also wanna make sure it's chilled too. So there's our our a uh, our wisdom of the week. Um, so, <laughs> so. All right, uh, lots of comments coming in. Let's put them up. Let's Mohamed, see what we got here. Like, oh. He likes our tip. Great, right, we, were good. we thought it was maybe simple. Um, yeah. yeah, 
Uh, let's see. Looking forward to tip on translation soon. Oh, uh, we'll definitely get some more tips for translations. Uh, it's because uh, I kind of think that's what we just did. But Benjamin will get some more in there. Yeah, I think we have. A, I have a few more actually. I think that makes uh, makes it. Oh, looks like two thousand subscribers. Somebody said. Um, ah, so so cool. Thank you, Gabriel. Yeah. Yes, happened last week after the show. I really uh, wanted it to happen during your show so I could play that funky video, but it didn't happen. But we got there. Thanks, everyone. So, Ah, so here we have a question. Brian Brock asks, um, it's off topic, but it's been said that interactive reports will at some point be deprecated in favor of interactive grids. Should new app development avoid interactive oh. reports? So I have to say I've heard that and I actually kind of thought that might happen for a while, but I am I think it will be a very long time. I, I have no inside information on this. I have none at all, but I do think it's going to be a very long time before interactive reports get uh, get deprecated. And also, I almost can't imagine that if they do, that there isn't going to be some sort of a means of of converting then to the grids. Because I mean, for so many customers, for so many clients, the the interactive reports are are you know the meat of the apps, and so there would just be a colossal I think effort. I would think. It would, and you know, interactive reports are metadata driven, so that makes it a lot easier to to, to do some sort of uh, migration or something if, if it ever has to happen. But I I don't see it happening. So, mm -hmm. um, well, Michelle, this could be our shortest tip if we get out of here soon, and I think that's really what people are coming here for is a short short session. So sure. And and it's not at all because you're just desperate to go get some sleep. No, no, no. I mean, I would <laughs> stick around and talk if there were more questions coming in. I just, I'm just not seeing them. So if there were more, I would not be heading off to bed. <laughs> so are you? Were you not going to respond to Rich's comment about the ANSI join? Oh, uh, I, I, you, I, you I, called it out. All right. <laughs> before, yes. Yeah, so when we looked at just it, before. I actually. I'm I'm old school, Rich, and also. This was a copy from the old original sample database app. It was there and just carried on. But you're absolutely right. Yeah, and in fact, I think that query really should have been an outer join if you if you really want. But um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, well, I think that really pretty much covers it. Um, let's uh, do all those things: ring the bells, send letters to your friends. Uh, Help us get it. to 3,000 subscribers. <laughs> yeah, that, when that happens, I'll be. <laughs> Bye-bye, Michelle. Bye, everyone. Thanks. And everyone else.